Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Noved Player, and welcome to episode 34 of the Noved Notes podcast, where we talk about many different types of creators inside the platform. With me today, as you can kind of already see, because my camera decided to go too far, uh, I have uh, a filmmaker known for um, a particular film inside of VR, uh, but we'll get into that in a second. But I have Ghostly. Ghostly, welcome to the podcast. Hope you're doing well. Hello. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Thank you for having me. Uh, <laughs> this is the first time I'm like actually being like somewhat like interviewed or like asked questions <laughs> like after rain dance. So like this is uh, I'm pretty excited to nerd out and talk about everything. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for the general listening audience at home, um, so what exactly, you know, do you do inside of VR chat? Uh, I am normally a like I'm I'm normally just a, <laughs> the average VR chat player. I just, you know, I go around dan- like public worlds, mess around, socialize all that, but every now and then uh I will get this weird urge to just film and um, I don't know. I, I make, I, I like to make films in this game. Um, and that, that story is long. <laughs> that story is very long how that came to be, but it's, I don't know. It, it, it's fun. It, it's fun how I became just, I went from nothing to like found a weird passion that I, I, oh, I really like. <laughs> No, fair enough. I would say it, it's kind of crazy to think, you know, because like, like you kind of said, you just kind of started with a passion. Um, so I guess, you know, before you even get to the main topic, you know, what, what kind of got you into that passion of filmmaking? Um, so a long, long time ago, I say a long time, two years ago, uh, Metacosm Studios had like a uh, posted like a casting call and I had known about Metacosm for a while but I really wanted to like give film a try because I was already friends with some people who were a part of the film community like Quinster who is usually the like lead cinematographer for a lot of big films like Into the Metaverse and uh, the Penrose Protocol and stuff uh, and I don't know when it's, I saw the casting call and was like you know what I'll I'll give it a shot. Uh and ever since that decision, it just opened this floodgate of like opportunity. I was like, oh my god, there's so much more to VR chat than I originally thought. There's <laughs> like there's this crazy film community. And I don't know. It it, it that's what kinda like started everything. Uh and it, here we are somehow. <laughs> no, fair. So you know that that's really cool that that was kind of your start you know going you know meeting some filmmakers and then going into like metacosm you know that's that's really cool i'll say there's a lot of amazing things when it comes to vrhf films some most of the things i wish would get more representation in the real world but that's me um i say it's definitely you know because realistically there's a lot of things you can do inside of vr that you can't necessarily do IRL, like, first of all, money, you know, it costs a lot of money for the equipment that we replicate in VR for a lot cheaper, <laughs> you know, mm. so, you know, it's, it's cool to see what people can do going uh, into like your specific stuff, you know, so you created this VR chat horror film, uh, Where Withered Flowers Grow. So first and foremost, what made you uh, want to create uh, this film like what inspired uh, what inspired the film itself um yeah that <laughs> that's a long and complicated answer as well but uh, originally it wasn't going to be about what it is now it, it's about like the six stages of dementia because I had like listened to uh, the caretakers uh, everywhere at the end of time which is a beautiful art piece album depicting those six stages through just audio and it's it's beautiful and dreamlike at first and then it just progressively becomes more distorted and more scary uh and it scared me so bad that i was like 
I I think I want to I think I want to make a film about this now. Um, but originally the film wasn't gonna be about dementia. It was originally gonna be about just the stereotypical like back rooms thing, which is why the back rooms is in it. Because uh, at the time when I had started working on it, Kane Pixels had uh, released his like back rooms found footage thing, and everything exploded. So I was like, I won on the bandwagon, and. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that it went from being this weird, just three part TikTok series that I wasn't satisfied with. Then I went to a short film that I also wasn't satisfied with. And then this third version of the film that I had made, it was like, okay, I'm into this a bit more, but it was missing like that motivation. Cause I originally I was going to be just like, Hey, let's make a short backrooms film. But I wanted it to be somewhat different and branch out because most backrooms media, you know, a guy falls in, wanders around a bit, either gets chased or dies. <laughs> but, uh, but I I wanted to like drive the person insane since that's another big factor in the backrooms. Uh, but I wanted motivation behind why he goes insane. Um. And I, I just, I couldn't figure out for the life of me what I wanted it to be. And then, uh, like I said, then I heard everywhere at the end of time, and I was like, okay, maybe he's already crazy. <laughs> um, and, I don't know, I, I, I had, like, re-shot the film four times. The, at least the first seven minutes of it. All of that was reshot four times, and I had, like... I had to com I, I had to merge what I was making and combine it into this really complex uh and beautiful story uh about dementia. And I wanted to like really try and like pay pay respect to such a heavy subject like that. Um but um yeah, you know, I <laughs> that's that's how the film came to be and that's what really inspired me was uh everywhere at the end of time. And just its beauty and its horror. And I was like, there's not a lot of films about dementia. So I want to I wanna talk about dementia, especially because it's something I've seen IRL. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, fair. I was going to say, it's a, it's a very dark topic, but yet one that isn't very often talked about. Uh, dementia, to be specific. Um, it, it's definitely... It, it probably hits a lot more people at home than what people believe, um, you know, because everybody grows old and a lot of people do suffer from dementia once they hit that age. Um, you know, so it's really cool that instead of, you know, a backrooms film, uh, it kind of goes more into a serious topic, uh, you know, to some avail. Obviously, there's there's some, you know, interesting moments uh, when it comes to, you know, character development and whatnot um, really quick. I'm going to put this right here and disclaim this. If you have not seen the film, I'm going to put a spoiler warning for the rest of the episode right now. Uh, go check out the film and then come back because we're going to do a lot of breakdown probably of certain scenes and stuff. Go check it out. It's down in the description. What doesn't matter what platform you're on, it'll be in the description. Go check it out over on YouTube. Link will be in the description. All right. Back to the actual episode. But... Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil it because if people haven't seen it, I don't want to mm -hmm. get railed in my comment section. Be like, Oh, why'd you spoil it? Go watch it. <laughs> go watch it. Yeah. I know it hasn't been out that long, but go watch it regardless. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so funny, funny enough. Um, I actually do want to talk about that first shot, uh, in particular. Um, so I, out of curiosity, that world in particular, because it, it definitely looked performance heavy uh, with all the rain particles and everything. <laughs> so I guess one of the first questions I wanted to ask uh, uh, about what was like the most, at least in my opinion, it looked like a struggle. What was like one of the most struggling parts when it came to that shot in particular? You said you re-recorded re a few times. Um, uh, That one, I didn't have to record too much, but it was... Mostly, like, the club scene all the way to, like, when Jason meets his dad in the back rooms. Um, but 
uh that scene in particular it was actually yeah somewhat performance heavy but i how i fixed that issue is i would aim the camera put my stream camera in my face and just look at the wall and not my actors <laughs> um and uh the hardest the other hardest part about that was just having jason run into that wall <laughs> uh i my my poor body actor at the time cat had like run into his poor wall like i think it was 12 times until it, we got it right oh. um it was yeah he, he was I mean, he, I kept asking him, like, do we need to take a break? Do we need to start? He's like, no, let's keep going. So, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I was very lucky that he was determined to get this shot right. Hey, um, body actors are, are a different breed uh, when it comes to that type of stuff. Because <laughs> we, we want to, as somebody who's body acted for, you know, Portal Media and a few other small projects, we want to get the shot perfect. We don't want it to, you know, seem lackluster. So it's cool that your your but your body actors, to say the least, had that same mentality. Um, Twelve mm. times though, that's that's. I'm pretty sure after eight, time number eight, I, my arm would probably hurt or whatever body part had to fly into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, poor cat. Yeah, he was in a, a little bit of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Um. So you were saying, you know, the club scene in particular was the one that, like, you had to record a bunch of times. So what, what exactly, what exactly happened there that you know caused you to want to record it, so re-record it so many times? I, it was mostly just like I couldn't get it right most of the time because I, I had envisioned the film being a backrooms film originally, so I was more focused on capturing, like, all the liminality, the liminal spaces and everything of the film. Uh, and then here I am trying to, like, record this very loud, this noisy environment. Uh, one that was performance-heavy as well, like, that one I had to do the same thing, was just look at the wall, record my actors without looking at them, and uh, I just I could not get it right for the life of me um, until towards the end. Like I think it was actually it was actually when I got invited to rain dance and I was like, I right, before I continue to anything else in this film, I need to finish this club scene. Uh, and I don't know, it I just wasn't ready for it at the time. But if I could go back now, that club scene would go so much harder. <laughs> <laughs> fair no that's fair i was to say you know um i mean you you could always remaster it and call it a day if you really wanted to you know they've they've made reboots before I'm not saying you know that should be the normal but you know call it call it a director's cut if you will um <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you actually did win the 2024, uh, best film for rain dance immersive. Um, so I guess one of the questions I wanted to ask, you know, what, what was the process, you know, of getting into rain dance in the first place? Was it, were you just chosen at random or, you know, was it kind of like application type situation? Like kind of what, from kind of the start, you know, what, what exactly made that happen? Uh, yeah, it was application, but um, I like originally I I because I've been working on the film for like two years, just on and off. Um, but uh, the director of the Penrose Protocol, uh, Kongalu, he like he he'd seen my bits and pieces of my film, uh, and so did Quinster, and they were all like, "We highly suggest you submit this to Rain." Like I I had friends basically just telling me like go submit it submit it now do it now and i'm like oh uh, uh, okay <laughs> and uh i don't know I, I submitted i didn't expect to get a response as quick as i did but yeah joe like i don't he, i don't remember how long it took him but i remember it being really fast and it was just like hey we'd like to invite you to our festival and i was like oh snap uh okay uh i'm not done with the film but I can try and finish it before deadline. <laughs> uh, and I, lo and behold, I somehow did. <laughs> wow. I, out of curiosity, how long was the deadline from like you being invited to the actual Raindance Immersive? 
uh, I think it was like three months, so I had quite a bit of time, but uh, the thing about with, like this film, I was on my own somewhat. <laughs> like I, I, I had like Kong, you know, encouraging me and like other filmmakers encouraging me, but I didn't have like stuff like studio resources or like consistent body actors i would just ask my friends i'm like hey are you available uh you know just uh, mostly lazy the dino king is the person who like popped up the most he's phenomenal actor he's in so many films uh for a good reason um but uh, i don't know i just i was i was pretty much on my own and then i just having to learn like cinematography a proper cinematography too within vr chat uh and having to learn how to video edit too i knew nothing um i just slowly learned everything over time and then rain dance all of a sudden i had a deadline so i had to like <laughs> put it in fifth and learn quicker <laughs> uh and i did and it was nice <laughs> no fair that's i that i didn't know that you didn't have like video editing experience so that's that's crazy you know so because i mean a lot of people like they'll go to school for like filmmaking and stuff but the fact that you you know you didn't know video editing you didn't know like proper i'm gonna put proper in quotation marks because there's a lot of ways of doing it depends on depends on how you run it um there's no real mm. proper way there's just different versions is what i like to I like to assume because I know people that have done like with a regular VRC camera that are probably better than some VRC lens filmers. And that's that's saying <laughs> something that is saying something, um, you know, and there's so many, you know, different types of assets nowadays compared to like two years ago, three, four or five years ago, you know. I would say now you got, you know, like we have better VRC lens. We have, you know, certain avatars that are like dollies. We have like camera path uh, by DX. Like there's all sorts of assets now that are a lot more uh, helpful to say the least when it comes to filmmaking. But that's really cool though. I, I didn't know that you, you never learned like video editing prior. So that's, that's really cool. Um, very impressive to say the least. I mean, sh I mean, <laughs> shit. Rain Dance thought the thought so. So I mean, you know, <laughs> fair enough. You know, like <laughs> just goes to show. Rain Dance will, you know, if it if it shows true talent and true work, it'll it'll get chosen. Doesn't matter what your experience is. So that's that's really cool. Um, you know, <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely an interesting thing. Um. Because I saw in the in the credits you did use um, lens, and I believe it was uh, I don't remember which mm -hmm. Dolly avatar it was, but I did see there was a Dolly avatar in there. Um, so out mm -hmm. of cu out of curiosity, you know, as somebody who also uses VRC lens, but maybe for like the general listening audience that may not know, you know, what is one of the like what is one of the advantages and one of the disadvantages of using VRC lens, at least in your opinion, from your experience? Uh, I would say there's just a lot of, a lot more like creative like options with VRC lens. Uh, not like V the normal VR chat camera is really good. Like you could make some really, really awesome stuff with the just base VR chat camera. But if you want to like exceed that even more VRC lens offers so much more like a like a hand drone that you can use to like fly around and i used that drone a lot in the film i i loved that drone <laughs> um and then like the manual focus you can adjust like its aperture and like sharp like it'll show you where you know that depth of field is gonna be rather than like having to really look into that camera to figure out where it is but um i don't it's 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 really good it's a good tool for uh filmmaking and if and just photography in general it's a really good camera uh it offers a lot more options um and yeah i, don't know, I would recommend it for you know filmmaking photography and stuff no absolutely we're not sponsored by vrc lens by the way i just want to throw that out there we're not sponsored at least i'm not i don't know if you are but i'm not um, no i'm not <laughs> okay <laughs> we're not sponsored we just both believe in the actual you know vrc lens um i mean hey you know you know 
little creator of VRC Lens, if you ever want to come on the podcast. Uh, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> 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 but but yeah, no, it's um, it's definitely it's definitely crazy to see how far it's grown with VRC Lens um, when it comes to films in particular. Um, so I guess that's one of the advantages, like at least from because I know you said you kind of had to like look into the stream camera quite a bit. Granted, they can't see my stream camera, mm. but was there any like <laughs> was there any struggles when dealing with like certain performance heavy worlds with VRC lens that you kind of had to deal with when making the film? Really, it was mostly just that club scene, but uh, most of the other shots was just me trying to f figure out how to frame it like properly how to make it look like a movie um which uh again over time i just i started learning and learning and learning and like i took a lot of cinematic inspiration from like video games and like uh specifically the movie joker because joker's got a lot of like really scary and really intense cinematography um and uh i Honestly, that's all I have to really say. I... <laughs> Fair. No, that's okay. I was gonna say, um, it's it's definitely because I I will say like some of the shots first. You know, for someone who's just doing research on it and just kind of going for it, there's a lot of good key shots uh, within the film. Um, one that comes to mind in particular was the reveal of I don't know if you can call it like a demon or something, but like when the mom was standing <laughs> and like the demon just kind of like four four arms like around and just kind of peeks and it has that like that turning like shot i was like oh dude that's sick like i i i, I popped off the first time i saw it <laughs> like i was like this is so good what the hell <laughs> like it, it was really good but it's it's small subtle things like framing the shot that kind of make it that feeling of you know reveal um I know some of my friends that are filmmakers are gonna shoot me for saying the some of they know what I mean, right? Like they know what I mean, but I'm not saying it in their terminology. Sorry, Gersey, I love you. Um anyway. <laughs> but, <Damn. laughs> but 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 getting that getting that proper framing, it it, it goes a long way, you know, because that's what gives it that extra effect of like whether it's reveal, um, or you know, more you know close end or death uh it's it's definitely a cool thing um so kind of to go into kind of more of the scenes in particular um you know because there's there was a lot of scenes in different worlds um so we kind of talked about the club scene a little bit so i kind of want to go on the opposite end of the spectrum what was uh which world that you used in the film was like the easiest to film in uh Honestly, it was, uh, it was the, it's called Epilogue, Epilogue Chapter 2, um, which is where, you know, the protagonist, you know, he's wandering around uh, with his father calling out to him and stuff. Uh, that was the easiest place to film because there was just, that film is naturally just stunning and naturally really liminal and twisty and distorted and stuff and i was there was a lot of really good places to film in that world uh and i wasn't too focused on like blocking or lines i would just wander around with the crew and i would be like this would make a good shot let's do this <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> fair uh, I didn't know uh, yeah no, that, that, that's all <laughs> no that was it <laughs> no fair I, I was gonna say uh yeah epilogue both epilogues really are amazing worlds um so i guess i guess kind of to ask because you know speaking of the worlds that you filmed in you obviously used quite a bit of the back rooms within the film so i guess one of the question uh so how long did it take you to finally get to those places or did somebody just know exactly where to go <laughs> uh that was me <laughs> i spent so much time in that world i know where every single door is i know where all the secrets are i know so much about that world to the point where i like if like if we were to go there now i would still be able to lead you through all of it within like 20 minutes probably <laughs> like Fair. i <laughs> film i had to film in that world so much and it was like 
it was that level zero part, the yellow walls, the buzzing lights, all that. Like, that was the, I won't say the hardest place, but it was hard to, like, be consistent with the filming locations. So I tried to make sure they were all close by to the spawn is how I, like, kind of tried to manage where things are. And I would also use landmarks because throughout the world there's, like, red lights or, like, there's specific doors that i just remember um and i would just i would use those landmarks to help guide me through those mazes of because that world's giant there's so like out of all the back rooms worlds you can get lost in that one the easiest oh hands down i would say as i've been through it a few times but you know to have to have it essentially like stuck in the mind and know exactly where everything is fair enough could not be me i that's impressive to say the <laughs> least um yeah i was like my main my main curiosity was because there's so many different locations you used like cuz i'm assuming this all wasn't done in a night um so out of <laughs> out of curiosity like if you had a guess i don't know if you know the exact number but if you had a guess how long it took to to shoot all of the shots that were in the back room's world. Mm. I would say, God, like how many shots you said? No, like how long, <laughs> how long did it take you to get all of the shots done? Oh, uh, uh, I'd say in terms of like all the film sessions, it'd probably be like, I don't know, maybe like 60, 70 hours of just trying to get, you know, just, but yeah, just find the locations and film in them. Uh, there were times I did get lost and my poor actors were just following me around. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, when are we going to film? <laughs> I'm like, soon, I promise. <laughs> and if I, if I remember correctly, you actually did upload as well some behind the scenes footage and stuff too. Um, definitely make sure yeah. to go check that out too. Link will be down there as well. Um, but I, I'll say, I, I definitely, um, I was definitely curious in that because the, with how big and massive that world is, like size wise, like physical size wise, I was genuinely curious about that. Um, because that's a lot of different areas and I didn't know if you just did them all in one shot or if you had multiple filming sessions. Cause you know, unfortunately there's no persistent data for back rooms and there probably never <laughs> will be. Um, but to kind of, you know, to go through it over and over and over again, I was just in my mind. I was like, I wonder how long this took. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that area took a while. That's why I had to film it four times. <laughs> Jeez, I woof. So I, out of curiosity, kind of to you know, one eighty the topic a little bit. Still on the film side, but less about worlds. Um, so was there any particular reason for the names of the characters, or was it just kind of all right? This character's this, this, this. Uh, so the character Jason, uh, the the name Jason kept sticking out to me uh because i i had a family member who he's my cousin my big cousin he like would create characters all the time and uh there was one character in particular that he like he well he called jason and i was just like uh i i just leaned towards it because i just it felt personal to just call him jason uh and then you have vincent who's the dad the glitchy dad i Honestly, I, I, it was just more a, a personal reason. I was just like, you know, why not? Uh, favorite, one of my favorite, you know, video game characters from like a video game, a, a way out, Vincent mm. in the way out. Uh, and then like, yeah, Lindsay, Lindsay was just someone I knew. I, or, I don't know. I, I tried to like just put people I knew or personal reasons or like or personal names that I dear to me uh and who i thought would fit the characters well um oh, <laughs> that's really it i gotcha i gotcha uh i was gonna say yeah because you know some some filmmakers not all but some um you know they'll have like hidden meanings behind the characters and why they are the way they are so it's just one of those like curiosity type questions um you know so kind of to go into the characters specifically a little bit more 
Um, so what made you choose uh, the models that you used for each individual character? Like, was there like a specific reason for the? <laughs> so I know we talked about the names. Yeah, I know this is going to be, it's a lot of breakdown, but you know, it's, mm. you know, cause I know, uh, I think it was Lindsay, right? If I remember correctly, mm. that one was used with Studio Penrose. If I remember correctly, I could be uncultured as shit. I might be Studio Penrose. Don't kill me. Um, <laughs> but if I remember correctly, <laughs> that one was used in some of the Studio Penrose. I did recognize that one a little bit. Um, so was there like a uh, certain reason for like the avatars, or was it just kind of what looked best? Uh, it was really just that. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. I would go to my friends. I'd be like. Does this guy look like a Jason? Does this woman look like a Lindsay? Uh, Vince, Vince and I had picked out that avatar like ages ago. I was like, I know I want you to be like this. <laughs> um, but for Lindsay and Jason specifically, it was just I would go to my friends and be like, is this movie material? And they'd say, yeah. So I was like, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Whoa, what are you doing here? This is wild. <laughs> what are you doing here? I was here to remind these guys of something. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you going to remind them about, Lion? I wanted to remind them about something, too. <laughs> By the way, if you did you have fun at PJKT or VCAT this year? Is there another convention that you're looking for, but it's kind of not the season? Well, there's one co coming up for Halloween that would be definitely down your alley if you're into spooky, scary stuff as well, which is HorrorCon, which is October 26th and 27th this year. So you should definitely go see booze, people make stuff here in VR, lots of crazy stuff for you to go check out. There's also going to be DJs as well as many different worlds and events from panels to amazing things along the way. You'll have to check it out. It is a two day event. Like Lion said, October 26th and 27th. Make sure to be there. Go down in the description, discord.gg slash pjkt, and also HorrorCon's Discord will also be down there as well. Go check it out. It'll be amazing time. You'll probably see us there. There's a lot of amazing people from horror creators to world creators of the horror genre, all sorts of stuff. You don't want to miss it. Not at all. Go down in the description. Everything you need to know to find out where to go to attend is right down below in the hoobly what's the thingy down there. So sorry to interrupt your current viewing pleasure. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of whoever the guest is at this moment. I don't know who it is. There's a lot. There's going to be a lot. <laughs> we'll see you at HorrorCon. Woo! See you at HorrorCon. So I guess kind of to, uh, to add on to that same question, the monster itself uh, within that one scene. So out of curiosity, what, what was the choice behind that? Was it just one of those same things of like, oh, yeah, this looks good? Or was there – because you used the avatar very well, you know, with the arms and everything. So was that kind of pre-planned <laughs> or, you know, did you just find this – happen to find this avatar, you know, I was like, oh, this would be cool? Uh, I – there was a reason behind I knew I wanted it to be like this moth-esque creature. Um, It was – like – so that how I have a connect because like I have a connection to like dementia. Um, my grandmother would uh, take care of this little old lady at the time when I first started working on the film, uh, and she had she had she had like a form of dementia basically. And I remember you know every now and then my grandma would call me to like I don't know bring something over there like a gro like some groceries or whatever and I would one day I did that and you know this this old lady I would have to reintroduce myself to her every time I saw her um and I mean I understood why obviously but there was one day in particular I had brought groceries to them uh and you know as I'm walking out and they there was a little like flower bed there um by the door and because the flowers aren't being taken care of uh you know <laughs> they were withering a little bit but i don't know what flowers they were i don't know anything about flowers so i don't know why this was happening but there were moths like on the brick walls and even on some of the flowers and i was just like ah huh. so that's like the moth and the title kind of like or something I saw in real life. And um, I, I wanted this moth creature to 
almost represent or like symbolize dementia, kind of like the Baba Duke, how he symbolizes grief and loss and stuff. Uh, and so that was my idea with the mod. Like that was a, that was an intentional choice, but I did find the avatar completely on accident, <laughs> and I was like, "This is perfect!" Oh my god! Fair enough. No, that's that's really cool. Um, you know, kind of the thought process behind the title and the monster. Um, as somebody who's also had um family relatives who have also gotten to that point of age um where you have to reintroduce yourself every time it's it's a lot it takes a lot out of people nine times out of ten um not to get dark by any means like i like (laughs) this is coming from a place you know and it's um it's one of those things that no matter and this goes for anybody who is dealing with this type of stuff um if you or a loved one are dealing with this type of stuff hold those hold the memories dear that's all i can recommend in that case um you know because whether or not they may not remember you in the moment deep down they do realistically those memories that you've made you know from when whatever the age may be you know it they are there you know and it hurts it definitely hurts sometimes um but you know, take care of them and in turn, you know, take care of yourself, you know, um, once again, not to get, this got really dark really quick. Um, but, (laughs) (laughs) um, but that's, it's really cool that, you know, you kind of, um, cover the topic of dementia within a, in a horror film to say the least. Yeah. It's like the stages of dementia per se, but you know, it's, it's kind of cool to have like an actual topic be implemented into a movie, like a horror movie. Um, you don't see that a lot. You you really don't see that a lot. Um, nine times out of 10, it's like, Ooh, jump scare moment. Ooh, like, sorry. I don't, I don't care for much of the modern horror. Like <laughs> that's just a me thing. Um, but no, it's it's really respectable and really cool that you can, you know, do that. So I guess kind of to, you know, go kind of move on from that. Sorry to get dark, listeners. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so out of curiosity, you know, now that you have like a film under your belt, um, you know, is there any plans to, you know, maybe make, you know, another big film like this in the future or, you know, whether it's smaller projects, you know, is there, is there any potential for, um, like another film of this caliber? Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely cooking. Uh, uh, I'm cooking several different projects, but uh, all of them or most of them being horror themed still. Uh, and I, I plan to continue making more, uh, cause uh, you know, after, rain dance and everything like, it was a huge confidence booster and like, like i said I, i'd kind of found a weird passion within this game that i'm i'm definitely still gonna pursue uh one of those projects in particular uh it, it's an <laughs> yeah it's just a fun horror film it, it won't be talking too much on it but it's like <laughs> imagine phantom sense in vr chat but it's like you know what if you could actually feel people, but what if you could ox- like actually hurt people within this game? So it'll feature like a paranormal aspect to VR chat and everything, or just VR in general. And uh, that one, that one's gonna be uh, a personal and outside of like any studios and stuff. But it's that one. I'm pretty pumped to work. I'm not gonna say too much about it, but it's yeah, you know, it's. It'll be a fun one. Uh, and as for like a more like serious topic films, I'm definitely still gonna do a lot of those. Like I, I'm collaborating with another creator on another big topic heavy film, and it'll still feature you know some pretty horrific imagery and horrific depictions of said topics. It's it'll be. Like we want it to be respectful still, so and I want all of my films that talk about stuff like this to be respectful, um, but also be entertaining at the same time. 
Right, of course. No, I, I say when it comes to that aspect, you did an amazing job, um, as well as your actors when it came to uh, where withered flowers grow. Um, you guys did very well in that respect. Um, as somebody, like I said earlier, God, I feel so bad. Like that, that was such a dark place that I went to in here. I didn't express all of it out here, <laughs> but man, that, that shit hit me for some reason. Um, but, but yeah, as somebody who's experienced, you know, a relative who went through that, it, it kind of, it spoke language. It spoke volumes, not languages. It spoke volumes, um, to that avail. Yeah, no, sorry. You just start speaking Spanish, Italian, Latin. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, bring, bring go burr. Anyway, um, but, <laughs> um, but it's really, it's really cool that you're wanting to kind of continue doing, you know, bigger things as well as more serious topic things. So, um, definitely wish you the best of luck in that. Um, because VR chat filming is not easy by any means. Um, <laughs> so it, it takes, it takes time and dedication and effort. So I'm very excited. I think some of the people listening are very excited to hear what you got going on next. Um, so definitely, <laughs> definitely keep up the good work in that regard. So, you know, kind of to go back into the movie a little bit, um, you know, was there, was there ever a scene in your opinion that was probably like the funnest scene to shoot like it not necessarily like how easy it was what was like the funnest i know you kind of mentioned epilogue a little bit you know but like was there a particular scene like what like one scene or maybe two scenes that was like oh dude that was like amazing like type type moment <laughs> one in your uh, opinion that that's stood probably out. the scene where for me that's the scene when jason falls into the back rooms that was a I don't know, like in the behind the scenes video, I, I feature like how it looked before, <laughs> and it wasn't. It, it looked good. It just wasn't as exciting or as I, I, Joe put it. He, he called it iconic, which I was real happy about. But uh, I don't know, like my actor at the time, Coda, who also voices Jason. <laughs> um, he had see like. He'd come up with the idea, or I had come up with the idea of like potentially using like play space like this, uh, to like, like have ourselves go into the back room because the world we filmed in, where Jason, you know, before he falls in, that's a different world, and I noticed that the skybox was completely pitch black, and I was like, hmm, the skybox in the back room is completely pitch black. What if we? like show him literally falling down into the back rooms instead of just he clips through the ceiling um and that was uh, to me that was the funnest scene and it was even funner like because i'm i was editing it in real time you know like everyone was reacting to how it looked at the end we were all like super pumped and excited of how awesome it looked <laughs> No, fair. I would say it's it's definitely a well edited scene to say the least. I was genuinely curious. Like, I, all right, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't see the behind the scenes stuff. I will after this episode. <laughs> but well, because I didn't want to be spoiled, right? I I wanted to kind of like mm. I wanted to keep it as a normal person who's just seeing it for the first time, um, without all mm. the you know getting into specific as as effects and stuff, um. But it, it was it was really I could have fooled me. I thought it was like Blender animated or some shit. And I was like, yeah, it's only VRC <sighs> lens and a dolly. I'm like, oh, OK, cool. That's awesome. Like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's no, that's it's a really it's a really good shot. Um, so I guess kind of kind of to go into the behind the scenes moments a little bit. Um, was there ever a was there ever a moment that you may have shot in um like in any of the worlds that you were just kind of like on the fence about putting in or maybe leaving out like whether it's like a funny bit or like a more serious bit um was there any of those type of things <laughs> that like could have possibly been seen in the movie but just never saw the light of day uh at the time i was really work i was i don't know if you know who the clip kids are they're like big tiktok group or whatever um 
uh, at the time I like wanted to feature them as like a cameo in the club scene. Uh and like I don't know, they dance around. They they like they're big dancer. They're a big dancer group, so I was gonna have them like do some funky moves, but uh we never could get like the scheduling right. Um and that that was that was just gonna be like a funny bit, but I'm I think I think the film benefits without stuff like that. Um and then there was, I think, a sign like a time when Jason walks into that room with the mannequins. Uh, the mom had like, it. I was originally Jason was gonna see the mom for the first time and like walk up to her, talk to her, but you know, she doesn't know who he is and stuff. But I, uh, I found a better way, which is what you saw in the film, to like approach that. But originally, like, you know, Jason would walk up to his mom and like. Mom, what are you doing here? Hello, hello, hello. And he says that later in the film, but he said it a lot earlier in that room. And I'm glad I changed that <laughs> because it makes everything flow so much better. Um, and then I, I can't think of any more at the top of my head, but there were a lot of times where it was just I would reshoot things because the flow of things didn't feel very movie like or it felt very choppy and weird. A lot of footage that I didn't throw in of just Jason walking in, walking around all the liminal spaces that I feature in the film. I had cut out a lot of footage of that. <laughs> there's there was a, there's so much. There's so much. Um, no fair. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, you know, I was gonna say, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely crazy um, when it comes to those types of things, right? Because realistically if you had in let's say i don't know what the proper terminology is for us i'm uncultured but if you had like an extended cut you know of like the entire film if you had to get estimate how long do you think they would be because i think if i think the runtime is like what 26 minutes i think is the current runtime for the mm. yeah uh i would say it would just extend to like maybe 35 minutes uh, but not too much longer, but yeah, it would have added a little bit of time. I gotcha. Well, that's cool, man. Like that's, that's, that's really dope. Um, I guess kind of like one of the things that, you know, I wanted to ask, um, cause I, I ask uh, a lot of the creators that come on this uh, podcast, kind of this question. So as a now, like as a now pretty much, I don't want to say well known because that's that sounds weird but as somebody who has made a film and you know received in a you know a rain dance award you know for maybe the people that are listening that are interested in filmmaking you know is there any type of advice you can give um you know for the people that maybe want to make films in vr like what what's a good piece of advice that you could give them uh i would just say like go for it um like I knew nothing. Like I like I knew nothing, and I'm I don't I'm not the smartest person in the world. So I'm like, if someone like me can do it, like you can do it for sure. You know, just like just go for it. If you have any film idea in general, and if you're very passionate about the idea of uploading a film to the internet and stuff, just letting people see your work, I uh, don't let anything or anyone stop you from doing it. Uh, and you don't need VRC lens to make something like this. You can use the normal VR chat camera. You can know nothing about video editing. It can be as simple as, you know, I don't know, a music video. It can be a very short skit, just anything. I just go for it. <laughs> um, because, you know, you gotta start somewhere. And my film, by any means, was nowhere near, it, it did not look as good as it does now but that's because i'm stubborn <laughs> and just kept refilming it and but yeah definitely definitely go for it just you can, if again if i can do it you can do it so yeah no oh, absolutely um oh, that's really cool like i mean granted don't don't sell yourself short because i mean the film was great you know but like, <laughs> so i guess like cuz we are we are starting to run a little bit out of time. Um, but I, I do want to ask, 
Um, so as you applied for rain dance and everything, um, what was your kind of thought process going from submission phase to winning like the best film of 2024 rain dance kind of, you know, for, cause not a lot of people like granted a lot of creators know about rain dance, but not a lot of like generalized people know about rain dance immersive. So kind of explain the process from, you know, you had submitted the application for it. You had gotten accepted. What happened then? And, you know, kind of leading up to that, that announcement from your point. Of view. Uh, from my point of view, it was, yeah, no, I got accepted. And then it was just, you know, had to finish the film. And obviously uh, the curators of the festival itself were very patient with me and were very patient with others as well, because not everyone had finished you know their submissions and stuff we were all on a bit of a time crunch but they were all very patient um especially joe joe was very 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 patient with me um and even helped me improve the film uh as we were leading up to the the show date basically um and when it came to like the award and stuff i like i didn't think i'd win <laughs> i don't i I knew my I, I was proud of my film and I didn't really care if it won or not. I'm you know, I was like, you know what? I did all of this. I made a badass film and I got to show it at Rain Dance Immersive, so I'm happy. Um and then and when they called my name for the award, I was like <laughs> I was I was happy and I was like, "Oh my god. I didn't think I'd actually win that." <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go. Because <laughs> um, like, this is my first film. So I don't know, this, this is only the beginning. And yeah, no, I got a lot to learn still. No, fair enough. Well, once again, congratulations on the Rain Dance Award. Um, like that's that's really cool that, you know, you were able to submit it and win your first time around. Um, that's not an, that's not an easy feat. If you've seen previous year rain dance entrance, which you can do that on rain dance's website, I think, I think you can go into their archive. I think, um, there's some really mm -hmm. talented stuff, you know, not only with films, but like, you know, worlds, experiences, live performances, all sorts of stuff. Um, all of which phenomenal stuff. Um, but definitely, you know, kudos and congrats uh, again on winning the best film of 2024, Rain Dance. Um, expensive clapping for you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I guess, uh, you know, because we are we are running a little bit more short on time. Um, so I do want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This was really cool to kind of pick your brain about the film a little bit. Um, you know, <laughs> um, let me, you know, kind of peer into the mind of the director behind a behind a horror <laughs> film um uh but yeah no thank you so much for coming on it was it was a blast <laughs> thank you for having me this was fun good i was it, it realistically it definitely did not feel like an hour i'll i'll keep it real i mm -hmm. i was like oh yeah it's probably been about 20 minutes oh it's been like 50 all right cool <laughs> um no it's, I, <laughs> uh that's how you know that's how you know it's you know quality stuff because it just feels like you know it doesn't feel that long <laughs> i've said this numerous times yeah, no. um but no thank you again <laughs> um i'll say before we go um i do want to have you you know let the audience know where they can find you you know any socials any links that you want on screen or in the description um but yeah tell the people where they can find you and uh <laughs> take it away uh yeah you, know, you can find me on uh, you know d ghostly on youtube.com uh or you know d ghostly on twitch because uh, I, I plan to bring back some streaming uh not much horror filming but more so me being a wuss playing some horror games <laughs> uh but yeah <laughs> fair enough yeah i forgot you don't have that many socials i forget <laughs> i forgot <laughs> not really <laughs> so i think i think you know, uh, i think at yeah, twitch youtube and twitter i think is what or i'm not calling uh, i'm not calling it x <laughs> i think we're the only three uh, yeah, that I, I saw i do have a 
I do have a Twitter now. That was very... I didn't have a Twitter before this film. I was like, I should make one, huh? <laughs> but, yeah, I have that too. I forgot about it. <laughs> it's okay. 90% of the people forget that that's a thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, thank you once again. And of course, um, you know, please make sure to go check out the film over on Ghostly's YouTube channel. Um, you won't regret it. If you, granted, if you haven't watched it when I said the spoiler alert in the beginning, that is your fault. I am not responsible. Deal with it. Anyway, um, you had your warning. I normally wouldn't post warnings like that because <laughs> you you read the episode title. I'll put one. I'll leave that one there. But um, go check out the <laughs> film. It's down below. Um, but ladies, gentlemen. Everybody inside and outside the ballpark. This has been episode 34. 34 of the Nova Notes podcast. Uh, I do want to thank you all so much for watching, listening, depending on what platform you're on. Uh, of course, if you did enjoy what you're hearing or watching, uh, make sure to hit that like button. Also, leave a comment down below. Let us know what your favorite scene from the film was. Go check out the film. The link's going to be down there. But comment down below what's your favorite scene from the film. You know, I guarantee Ghostly might, you know, check out the comments, see what people enjoy, maybe for potential upcoming projects. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I do want to thank you all so much for watching once again. And of course, if you are coming back to check out some of the other episodes, why not hit that subscribe button? You're already coming back anyway. But with that, I want to thank you all once last time for watching, listening, depending on the platform. And I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Nobis Club.